The basic idea here is that we're going to take two important ideas we've already covered and smash them together into something even more important. It's called the Gram-Schmidt process. We've said that having an orthogonal basis is really nice. There are all sorts of nice things we can do if we have an orthogonal basis. So the goal of the Gram-Schmidt process is to take any basis and turn it into an orthogonal basis for the same thing. And the way we do this is basically by doing projections. Another important idea that we've talked about is that when we do an orthogonal projection, well, kind of as the name says, the remainder, what we get when we subtract the part that's in the subspace from the original vector is orthogonal to the subspace. Right away, that's telling us how we can create new orthogonal vectors. So basically what we do is we kind of go through and just repeatedly take a new vector, find the orthogonal projection, subtract it, and what's left is the new vector that will go into our basis. So writing that out as an algorithm, we're going to start with a basis, which we're going to call x1 up to xp of vectors. The first vector is just the first vector we started with. We start with a set of vectors x, we're creating a vector set of vectors v. These v's are all going to end up orthogonal to each other. So the first one, because we don't have anything previously established, my first direction is just the first direction I had. This next one, I've got the formula written out, v2 equals x2 minus x2 dot v. But honestly, a good way to think about this is we're taking the second vector minus the projection of x2 onto the previous v1. Similarly, this next one is x3 minus the projection of x3 onto v1 minus the projection of x3 onto v2. Now it is important that we use v2 and not x2. We have to use the orthogonal vectors to project onto, not the original basis vectors. But if we keep going through this, just keep subtracting off those orthogonal projections, we end up with an orthogonal basis for the same subspace. Now, this is a long, tedious process sometimes, even if the numbers come out nicely, as I've tried to make them here. So I strongly, strongly suggest that you pause the videos I'm going through this and you try to work along. Take some notes, work through this as I do it, to make sure that you understand what's going on. Because I can be perfectly honest, there's no way I'm going to record another video for, for this. It takes too long to do. Okay, so these are my x vectors. This is my x1, x2, and x3. My v1 is just my x1. It's just negative 1, 3, 1, 1. My v2 is the vector I just had minus, oh, sorry, is my second vector x2 minus the projection of x2 onto v1. We do that by doing v1 dot x2 so I'm dotting this and this so that's negative 6 minus 24 is negative 30 minus 2 minus 4 is negative 36 I put that over v1 dotted with v1 is 1 plus 9 plus 1 plus 1 is 12 so what I have here my x2 vector 6 negative 8 negative 2 negative 4 minus a negative 36 over 12 
times the v1 vector. Of course, minus a negative is a plus. So, my v2 vector, my second basis vector, is 6 minus 3, negative 8 plus 9, negative 2 plus 3, negative 4 plus 3. So far, so good. Now comes the hard part. In general, each one of these steps, each one of these vectors that we try to find, there's more work to finding it, it gets harder to do, more places to make mistakes. But the basic idea now, to find my third basis vector, fortunately after this we're done, I'm going to take my original third x vector minus projecting that vector onto v1 and minus projecting that vector onto v2. Altogether, this is basically saying we're taking the projection of x3 onto the subspace spanned by those two vectors. But the way we do that is just by taking the individual projections. Okay, so... To do this, I need to do v1 dotted with x3. That is, I'm taking this vector dotted with this vector. That's negative 6, plus 9 is 3, plus 6 is 9, minus 3 is 6. And that's over v1 dot v1, but we already figured that out. So that's just 12. So right now I have v3. I've got, it starts with x3. It starts with the 6, 3, 6, negative 3, minus 6 twelfths, the dot product we had here, over v1 dot v1, times v1. Now there's another subtraction I got to figure out. I get that one. I need to take v2 dotted with x3. v2 is this one. Dotted with this one is 18 plus 3 is 21 plus 6 is 27 plus 3 is 30. So I've got 30 again over v1 dot v1 so I got 30 twelfths times v2 was this one from there it's mainly just a matter of doing some fraction math here worth realizing that the 6 twelfths is 1 half, the 30 twelfths is 5 halves. So you're just getting a common denominator and I'll go ahead and just let you figure that out and we end up with the vector negative 1, negative 1, 3, negative 1. So this one, this one, and this one together should be an orthogonal basis for the same subspace. I probably should have checked as I was going through, but certainly it's worth going through and making sure that every pair of these is in fact orthogonal. I won't go through every one, but here, negative 3 plus 3 plus 1 minus 1, that's certainly 0. If I take, let's see, I think I can get, I'll almost get that one and that one on there negative 3 minus 1 plus 3 plus 1 again that'll be 0 and if you check I can't get them both on the page at the same time if you check v1 and v3 those should be orthogonal as well one final note we said that an orthogonal basis is important but then an orthonormal basis is even better 
how can I do that? Well, that's easy. Once I've got an orthogonal basis, all I need to do is divide each vector by its magnitude. If I do that, then I get an orthonormal basis. And it's typically done that you go ahead and just do this thing using the orthogonal vectors and then normalize everything at the end. It tends to be just a little bit easier than trying to normalize it as you go through.